Very interesting hearing Julie and, um, gosh, Rachel. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Julie and Rachel talk about um, segregation in, in certain ways. And if anybody who thinks that Christianity doesn't do segregation, I've lived in Calcutta in India for several years, and I've lived in the South Pacific. And in both places, I worshipped in churches where women, I think women were on the left and men were on the right. So I was with the baby on the left and... Yes, you would be, you know, the baby goes with, the babies go with the women and the men on the right. And that was, as Julie said, a, an entirely cultural thing. Um, but we Christians do that as well. Um, I've chaired a couple of Women of the World panels, multi-faith panels, um, which is a, a feminist um, um, a conference, I suppose, or a day, a week of, of celebration in London, South Bank Centre in London, which is a, a pretty secular outfit. And I've been very pleased to 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 chair this multi-faith both panel there to really sort of prize open a little space within um, a pretty, as I say, secular um, place where there seems to be a standoff between feminism and religion. And on each occasion, the place has been absolutely packed out with religious and non-religious people saying, how on earth can you be a feminist and stick with this lot or that lot or the other lot? How, how can you do that? And trying to square the circle. Um, but in fact, many of us do, and we three um, do stick with not just, um, I, just, not just the movement, um, I would say, of, of religious traditions, but also the institutions. Um, but the last, the last one we had this year, Lucy Winkett, who many of you will have heard of, and she speaks at Greenbelt sometimes. She's, she was interesting. She was saying there was a question from the audience about, you know, I just feel a hypocrite. How can I be part of an you know, intensely patriarchal institution and still call myself a Christian? And she said, well, some people, you know, it's up to individuals to make a, a choice. Do they stay or do they go? But she was interesting that she said that we need both. In the church, we need both. We need women who stay in and try to change things from the inside. But they are enormously helped by the people who leave and go it alone and get into, you know, can, can put their energies elsewhere in developing different theologies and, um, and just in bringing together different communities and um, intentional stuff that, that isn't patriarchal and just being an example of what, what could be if the institutional thing got itself together. So I, I like to have a view that it's not a, a barrier between the people who stay and the people who leave. In fact, we stay in touch with each other and we need each other, um, not least the ones who stay in because it's very hard to stay in and some nods around. It's very hard to stay in, and I feel particularly for women clergy um, and with the Church of England um, most of my adult life, and I think women clergy in the Church of England have a, have a really, really hard time and deserve our, our full respect and support. But I started off in Scotland. Um, and my dad was a, a Church of Scotland minister, so I was born up on, on a mountain in the north of Scotland. And the Church of Scotland had women ministers way, way back. So I grew up thinking it was completely normal to have um, a women clergy and that women had a, a, a place in, in that kind of a place in church, a leadership role in church. Um, and then, as I say, I lived and worked abroad for quite a while, um, came back. And as I will say, it's not, it's not the marriage that does you in, it's the children, really. When the children come along, how can you manage, you know, one on the, one on the hip and the babysitting arrangements and all the rest? How can you um, take, play your full part in society, even in church society, when you've, when you've got children? But anyway, I did. And I got stuck into the, the structure, and I was a church warden, and I was a deanery lay chair, and I was on diocesan synod. And and loads of committees. How many people have been on a committee? <laughs> and I found it really dispiriting. I don't know how you... <laughs> In the end, I thought, what, what, what actually am I doing here? And am I really being able to, to make some kind of difference. And in the end, sort of peeled back from that side of it. Um, and I, I felt that within the Church of England that was, and I live in quite a, um, a hip and happening diocese, as dioceses go, it's quite a hip and happening one. Um, but even there, it was it, really the, the will, the political will to be, you know, to address patriarchy and to address, 
you know, women's place within the within the church just wasn't wasn't there. I remember at one one committee meeting, I think they were divvying out sort of subcommittee bits or task groups or task and finish groups and all that kind of stuff. And and, and at the end, the, the guy the guy who was chairing it said, um, "Oh, we um, happen to have uh, all men and all clergy on uh, leading all these things." Oh, well, there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> I thought, well, <laughs> but it would—it seemed to be such a revolution and such a just to do these little, little things, even these tokenistic things. Um, and I'm sure since I bowed out from from that aspect of my life, things have got enormously better, and I hope they have. Um, but I, sometimes I feel that just be, that women, because we don't have um, so much power, official power, we can we can do some more interesting things. We're kind of below the radar. Um, and maybe that's um, some of your experience that because you're not, you don't have that sort of upfront role that actually you can just, you can dodge and dive a bit and do a, f a few more interesting things. And uh, my experience of church women and church life and Christian um, life is that it's a whole lot more enjoyable <laughs> the, when, we, when the women get together and do things and we're not beholden to some of the, some of the structures. And I'd be interested in a minute to find out whether, whether that's your experience or not. But I, I, but I know I, I, do f I still feel the pain of those years of when I was really believed it could happen, um, that women, I'm a lay person, I've never wanted to, to be clergy, but for a f the, the full involvement of women um, in the church, I still feel um, that that was tough. And so what I do now is I know quite a lot of young women still coming through that and, and try to, to, you know, to help them along the way. And when they come saying, guess what happened? I say, yeah, it really is that bad sometimes. But on the other hand, there is some absolutely, one of the reasons I do stay with the institution is some fantastic people, you know, stuck in with, within the institutions that are inspirational and brilliant and I'm so glad that they are in there and, and doing their bit because I do think we really we do need the structures as well as the you know the, the, the informal and the the neighborly and the the friendship groups and so on. We do need particularly we need religious religious structures. Um, yeah, have a better we, we sometimes women we have a better time <laughs> when we get on with it ourselves.